my name is Chris Harrison, I'm from AlloyTutors.com and welcome to this video on phenols. So in this video we're going to show you what a phenol actually is, their reactions with bases and metals, the reactions with bromine water, uh, we're also going to look at how they react with acid chlorides too, uh, and a way in which you can distinguish between phenols and benzene, and also the most important thing is their uses as well wouldn't be chemistry without actually having a use for it. So we're going to start with by looking at what a phenol is. A phenol belongs to the aromatic group of chemicals. So that means it has a benzene ring in it. Now here's the benzene ring here and a phenol all it has is just an OH on the top. So this is a bog standard basic phenol. But of course we can add things to this um, to um, make different types of phenols as well as you're going to see here. Okay, so a phenol is basically classed as a weak acid. That means it dissociates poorly. Uh, it can give up its proton uh, in a very weak way, um, but that's going to be really important when we look at some of the reactions here. And you need to keep that in your mind at all times that actually phenol will act as an acid. That's really important in terms of how it reacts with other things. Um, another way of testing for phenols is actually by adding iron chloride or FeCl3. Uh, and if a phenol is present, it will actually turn purple. Uh, now, if we react that with a benzene, for example, we would see nothing whatsoever. So uh, there would be no color change. So that's really important because actually you do need to be able to know how to distinguish between a phenol and a benzene. But please check your exam board to make sure that actually you are, um, that this actually applies, that phenol chemistry applies because some boards don't, you don't have to know phenols whatsoever. Okay, so we're going to start with this one here, and this is a reaction with bases and metals. Now, just like standard acid-base reactions, you form a salt plus water. So we're going to actually draw our product here, and you can see we're going to draw our benzene there. Uh, and like with any acid-base reactions, we form a salt. So there's our salt there, and we call this sodium phenoxide. Uh, there's our phenol, and there's our sodium. Uh, and like any other reaction, which is acid base, we form water as well. So that's dead easy. Uh, and the same with uh, metals as well. So again, we can take our uh, phenol. So let's quickly draw it up there. There's our phenol. Uh, and we're going to react that, let's say, with lithium, which is a group one metal. It'll be reasonably reactive. Uh, and we're going to produce our salt um, because when we react acids, and metals together, we always form a salt. In this case, this one's going to be lithium phenoxide instead. And we're also going to produce hydrogen gas because acid plus metal gives salt plus hydrogen. Uh, obviously, this has to be balanced as well. So we're going to put a two in front of there, a two in front of there, and a two in front of there. Loads and loads of twos. Okay, so make sure you remember that. It's not too difficult. Uh, just acid-base reactions and acid-metal reactions. Okay, so the next bit is the reaction of bromine uh, with uh, bromine water with your uh, phenol. Now, if we react this, uh, what we get is uh, this compound here. So there's our phenol. Uh, and actually what happens is the bromine actually attaches itself on. It substitutes a multiple number of times and it attaches itself onto here. Now this one, uh, and you'd actually form HBr as well. You need form three lots of HBr. So uh, this one will actually decolorize bromine water because you're forming HBr, which is colorless. Uh, and this compound here, which is uh, a precipitate, would actually form in your solution um, because it's quite a big molecule. It's, it struggles to dissolve in water. Uh, but this molecule here, if we had to name it, uh, the phenol always takes the uh, number one carbon position, uh, and then we go around here, that's two, and that's four, and that's six. So this is going to be 246 tribromophenol, uh, which is this product here. Now, if we did that with benzene, benzene is really, really um, very, very stable, so it doesn't react with bromine water at all. Uh, so therefore, if you add bromine water with benzene, you wouldn't see any change. In fact, it would just stay orange, which is the color of the bromine. But with the phenol, the reason why the phenol will react with the bromine is because actually some of the electrons in here are actually delocalized into the OH group at the top. That weakens the uh, ring structure uh, and that allows the uh, bromine to react as if it was an alkene. Because one of the tests for an alkene is for actually adding bromine water. Uh, but like I say, it's a very bulky molecule, so it does form a precipitate as well. 
Okay, um, so that's that one. And if we come on to this one, this is the reaction with acid chlorides. Uh, now, I'm not going to go through the mechanism for this reaction. I'm purely just going to show you uh, what's actually formed. But there is a video where it looks into the reactions of acid chlorides with uh, what we can treat this as an alcohol. So if you're looking for that type of reaction, then just click on the link below and you can have a look in that video. So, like I say, we're going to treat this as an alcohol. Uh, it has an OH group on there, and here's our acid chloride. Now, uh, when we take an alcohol and react it with an acid chloride, we always form an ester. So we're going to draw the product here, and I'm going to actually draw it down here. So we're going to have our benzene, which is going to go there, uh, and we're going to have the O bit on there. So effectively, when we react these things, the actual hydrogen, which is this bit here, this hydrogen will actually actually produce or react with the chlorine. So the chlorine will drop off the uh, acid chloride and so will the hydrogen. And that will form hydrogen chloride gas, which is not very nice. It's really uh, a white misty fume and heavily corrosive. So you don't want to breathe that stuff in. So this would be done in the fume cupboard. Um, but the product you form is an ester. So the hydrogen goes and so does the chlorine. So what we're left with is a carbon. And we have the double bond oxygen uh, and then the uh, CH3 on the end there, and obviously we form HCl as a byproduct, and this would be a gas. So, um, the name of this is just an ester. So, like any other ester, you name the alcohol bit first and then the acid bit. So, the alcohol bit in this case is phenyl, uh, and then this bit here is going to be eth because it's two carbons, so it's phenyl ethanoate. So, that's the name of this product here. Okay, and finally, just the last thing is looking at the uses of these. Um, they're very good for making epoxy resins, so this is used in glues. Uh, it's also used to make polymers as well, so for example Kevlar, which is obviously very important. It's bulletproof vests, really, really densely packed together. Uh, and it's also used to make antiseptics as well. In particular, TCP. Uh, TCP is trichlorophenol. Uh, and you can see here I've drawn the actual structure there. This is really good if you've got like a sore throat. You swig it down, uh, you gargle it, obviously you don't drink it, but you gargle it in the back of your throat, it kills off bacteria and then you spit it back out as well. Um, one final thing as well is actually uh, phenols are a very, very common starting product for the synthesis of pharmaceuticals. Uh, they're normally found in crude oil, uh, naturally found in crude oil, uh, and at the minute scientists are trying to look for new ways in which they can synthesize pharmaceuticals without an excessive use of phenol, as we suggest there, because obviously we know that uh, crude oil is uh, running out quite quickly, uh, and as a natural source, um, phenol comes from uh, crude oil so very important to make sure we find an alternative but there we go there's your reactions make sure you know them and um, make sure you know all the reactions on here the uses and how you can distinguish between a phenol and a benzene as well but that's it bye bye